Hey, book lovers. My name is M, and I want to talk about books and cats. Welcome back, book lovers. Please forgive my voice today. The COVID finally got me, and my voice is pretty rough. I have been incredibly lucky, though. It's been fairly mild, considering. Though I really hate not being able to taste food, that is a bummer. Overall, I'm fine. I don't feel great, but I'm fine. I really feel for the people who got this so much worse because I am vaccinated and this is a very mild case and I've been miserable for a week. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, get the vaccine, people, because even if you care absolutely nothing about other people, it will lessen the symptoms when you get it. And I'm saying when now for everyone, because I work from home and I live a hermit's life pretty much and I still got it. Anyway, on to more book-related things, I have a real quick request for you guys. I have a piece of writing coming out in an anthology, and the publisher, Folkways Press, is currently looking for sponsorship for printing and whatnot. If you can please check out the link in the show notes and support this up-and-coming women-run publisher, that would be fantastic, and it would also make it possible for them to print our stories to tell which you could also enjoy. It's an anthology of stories and essays about mental health, which, you know, is near and dear to my heart. (laughs) Anyway, please support them if you can. I am super happy with the piece that they chose of mine. It's one of the most honest things that I've written, and I feel good about it. So hopefully it gets printed. Anyway, now let's talk about Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was a fabulous book. I took a step away from my usual thriller genre. Um, This is just a beautiful story about a family and generational trauma. (laughs) So you know it punched me right in the guts. The story weaves back and forth between two different timelines. The main story is that of four children and their mother June and their lack of a father because their father is a famous singer who just kind of popped in and out of their lives during childhood. When the story begins, the kids are all grown up. They grew up on the ocean in Malibu and are all proficient surfers. The oldest daughter, Nina, is a bikini model. The boys, Jay and Hud, travel the world. Jay is a pro surfer, and Hud takes epic pictures of him riding the waves and sells them to magazines. The youngest, Kit, has just finished high school. She's an expert surfer but her siblings have always held her back. Um, She's much younger than them, and they always kind of babied her too much. Now, things are not going well for the siblings when the book begins. Nina's famous tennis player husband has just left her, and she still has to prepare for their annual party that has turned into the party to be at every year. Hud's not having an easy time either. He is in love with Ashley, which should be great, but Ashley is his brother's ex, and they've been together longer than Jay and Ashley have been broken up. Kit is just planning on how to kiss her first boy at the party. Low priorities. (laughs) As the time of the party nears, we also get a second story, the beginning of their family, starting with their gorgeous mom, June, meeting a handsome boy on the beach. They fall madly in love, and he asks her to marry him. They have no idea at the time that he will become the Mick Riva, a famous singer. Well, he's pretty certain at that point, but it's not a reality yet. June's mom is not so sure about the wedding, but June wants to escape her family's fish shop and the prospects of a dull future. They're young and in love, plus June is already pregnant with Nina at that point. The stories weave back and forth between the present and the rocky relationship between June and Mick Riva, because he is a complete piece of shit. And while June tries everything she can to keep going, he just keeps knocking her back every time he resurfaces. As a single mom and a mother of four, June ends up turning to vodka to help her sleep and relax. 
and things deteriorate from there. Nina quickly takes on the role of mother way too young. She gives up her personality completely and does everything she can to provide for her siblings, including starting to drive at 14 and dropping out of high school. She also has to run the seafood shop, because June did eventually end up back there. And by then, her grandparents have both passed, and June is far too into alcoholism to be much help. So one weekend, all of the kids had sleepovers planned for the same night, which never happened. Nina wanted to stay home and make sure that June wasn't alone, but June makes her go out and be a kid. She makes the point that she wants some alone time, too. You know, being a mother of four, she hasn't had alone time in, you know, 20 years or something. (laughs) But once she is alone, June drinks all of her vodka and then finds some old tequila and decides to take a bath. And she drowns. Nina is 17 at the time, and this is when she has to drop out of school. The school does help her, though. They keep quiet about them being parentless so that she can file for guardianship of the other three when she turns 18. She once again keeps her family together. But present-day Nina has finally reached the breaking point, and this is what had me sobbing. If you do not understand generational trauma, this is a really good example. Um, But there are so many other things to relate to in this book. There are a lot of different sources of pain. But it is also a story about family and love and support and making mistakes and continuing on regardless of what comes at you. Everything comes to a head at the party, which is wild. The pacing is fantastic. The revelations come fast and furious as the party grows and then quickly becomes unmanageable. And the ending is perfect. It's just absolutely perfect. And I don't feel that way about most book endings. So that's all I'm going to say. I haven't really spoiled much. Um, Definitely read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is an amazing book. So good. And now I'm going to take a quick break, and then I will be back to talk about another fascinating book. Hey, book lovers. Want to hear a story? Storytime with M is coming back on February 6th with a dystopian fitness nightmare, Super Gym. Get fit or die trying. Every Sunday, I'll be bringing you a chapter, or maybe two, of this sci-fi horror novel. And if you missed season one, I shared two different books last year, Feelers and Catching Cats. You can find all of the episodes on booksandcatspod.com, as well as everywhere you listen to podcasts. Join me for Chapter 1 of Super Gym on February 6th. Welcome back, book lovers. This week I actually have a second book to talk about, and this one is completely different from Malibu Rising. We're leaving Malibu and going to Texas, and way back in time. Let's talk about The Midnight Assassin by Skip Hollinsworth. I heard a recommendation for this book on the My Favorite Murder podcast, and... They suggested specifically the audiobook because the author reads it himself, and that was a great suggestion. I love audiobooks for nonfiction anyway, but this one definitely read as more of a novel. He tells the story of the first serial killer, potentially, in the United States. It happened around the same time as Jack the Ripper, when Texas was still coming into being. Black servant women began being found dead, having been hit in the face with an axe, which was usually stolen from the house woodpile. There were a lot of rumors and speculation, of course, and a lot of fear. But the police did very little about it until the killers switched to white women. And then they started to care. It is a fascinating tale of horrific murders, local politics, racism, outlandish accusations, and even some links to Jack the Ripper across the pond. This is an excellent book, and I would also highly suggest the audiobook. If you dig true crime, and specifically historical true crime, this is a great one. Definitely check out The Midnight Assassin by Skip Hollinsworth. And now it's time for the quote of the week. I have two quotes for you this time. One is hopeful, and one is just plain true. (laughs) The first is from Victor Hugo. Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. I like that one a lot. And if you happen to be going through a dark time right now, just 
keep in mind that the sun's coming. And the second one is from someone named Richard Steele, which is, reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. And that's just true, and I like it. (laughs) So I had planned on bringing you another chapter of Heart of the Storm this week, and I do have one. We are speeding toward the ending at this point, but I am going to wait on that until my voice is hopefully in better shape next week. So just going to have to wait till next week to hear what happens. So that is it for this episode of M's Books and Cats podcast. Remember to check out the link in the show notes for more information about Folkways Press, our stories to tell, and their Kickstarter. I love the idea of supporting a new publisher, especially a female-run publisher. So please check it out. Every little bit helps, even if you can only donate like a couple bucks. And also, you can find all things Books and Cats at booksandcatspod.com or on Instagram, books.cats.pod. And if you're on TikTok, I just started a TikTok. There's only a couple things on there right now, but check us out. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you for joining me for Season 2. I am so excited for what this year is going to bring, especially for new books. Until next time, book lovers. Keep reading.